honored to uh, to welcome you all. It's um, CSUN has been there uh, since the, the struggle began, and we'd like to welcome you with the veteranas, veteranos of Tucson, so they can contextualize uh, the current struggle today that we're that we're experiencing, that we're engaged in. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, our Mexican American Studies Advisory Board. Uh, if you could, raise, if you all could stand or raise your hand, they've been. They've been uh, with us, advising us, uh, helping us through this uh, through these difficult times during the ban of, uh, of Mexican American Studies. So if we could give them a hand, uh, the Mexican American Studies Advisory Board. And the students, the current uh, Tucson High students, TUSD students, and former students, the alumni of Rasa Studies, if y'all could stand and we'll give you a hand. For for staying with us, being engaged in the struggle. Good. And then the young, the young uh, chamacos, chamacas in the back, the future, uh, future leadership of of, uh, of Tucson and our struggle. You guys can. Thank Dr. Rudy Acuna for for really um, for spearheading this effort, this effort of solidarity. Uh, Dr. Acuna has been with us uh, throughout this struggle. He has long Tucson roots, um, and with that, I'm going to let uh, Salomon Badanegro. These these folks that that stand that sit behind me are, are the foundation, the foundation of, of Chicago Studies here in Tucson, the foundation of community organizing the very foundation of, of the Chicano movement in Tucson that we stand upon. So with that, I would, um, I'm very honored to uh, introduce to you all Salomon Badanegro. Well, thank you. First of all, I want to welcome our friends from our California. I truly appreciate your making the effort to come over here. And I want to introduce the people here who, uh, as Sean mentioned, I'm extremely honored to be in the presence of these people. These three women represent years of work, commitment, and progress in our community. There hasn't been a single issue that I can think of in the last 30, 40 years that they haven't been involved in and done good work. And not only done good work, but won fights. And the first one here is Lupe Castillo. <laughs> Lupe is one of, the, one of the original founders of the Chicano movement here in Tucson. Next to her, Raquel Rubio Goldsmith. <laughs> so, I forgot to mention, Lupe has uh, taught Chicano studies at Prima College for 20, 30 years? 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. Matter of fact, she and Raquel pioneered, pioneered Chicano Studies at Kima College back when it was not when it was not a very popular thing to do. Um, next to Lupe, you have Raquel Rupert Goldsmith, who, who, who now teaches Chicano Studies at the University of Arizona. Yeah. And for years, taught at Kima College, and was honored, I was doing some research for a book that I'm writing way back when, and back in, not only in the 60s, the ACLU honored a very young Becky Goldsmith for outstanding work in protecting civil liberties. So this woman goes back many years. She can find a good part for many, many years. And last on, on, on the far left is Isabel Garcia, who is the foremost, foremost champion of human rights, immigrant rights in the state of Arizona. And was also involved in the original walkouts. Lupe was involved in the walkouts, organizing the walkouts, and Isabel was involved as the walkout E. <laughs> she was a walkouter. Walkouter. <laughs> so, so, as you can tell by, the, by what I've said about him there, we have a lot of experience here. Rudy asked me to give a little bit of history of myself in the movement. And the reason that I'm so glad, my heart, Soars like a hawk to see all these young people here. 
is because I became involved in the Chicano in Chicano Politica when I was in high school. I was about your age. And at that time, I was a young kid and I was taken in. I was politically adopted, if you will, by some union organizers. One of whom was his dad, Rodolfo Garcia, Victoria Barraza, Eddie Jackson, a whole bunch of guys who got me involved in, um, I came from a union family, so it was very easy to get involved with them in union stuff. But they went way beyond union. They were involved in civil rights, which really brought home the point that our struggle, our struggle that we've been fighting all these years, is a multi-dimensional one. Yes. It's multi-dimensional. It goes through all realms of life. And these, these labor organizers who, who took me in started taking me to pick lines all over the place. All over the place. And they, um, they taught me a lot. And one of, the one of the lessons they taught me was we went to several picket lines that did not involve Mexicanos. They involved black people. And I remember that, that uh, people were asked, asked the question, why are you picketing when it's not, has nothing to do with Mexicans? And the response was very simple, that if we allow racism, discrimination, oppression, and we excuse it against one group, it's only a matter of time before it comes to you, it comes to your house. And that's a powerful lesson. When I was in high school, that's a powerful lesson. And then, um, and then we went on. Um, and Lupe and I were involved in the founding of the Chicano movement here in Tucson back in the late '60s. We met each other at the University of Arizona. I organized a group um, called MASA, Mexican American Student Association. Uh, and then, uh, about a year afterwards, I was being I was going to be impeached because I was embarrassing the group. Well, they didn't have a process for impeachment, but they were going to vote me out. So, myself and a whole bunch of others left and formed another group called the Mexican American Liberation Committee, which evolved into Mecha. And uh, the thing that I've, I always say, I taught Chicano Studies at the university for 17 years. And the thing that I always tell my students, and I tell everybody whom I talk to, is that young people, like the ones like yourselves, that tremendous power. Our movement, the Chicano movement of that period, moved mountains. We did things that people said we could not do. And the reason we were able to do them is not only because of our own experiences. We had, we had, we had experienced discrimination. We had role models. We had a lot of energy. But the biggest factor, I believe, as I look back on it, is that we were not afraid. We were not afraid. See, those who would oppress us, those who would oppress us, count. They count on intimidation. They count on, on the fact that they can intimidate people and scare us into not doing things. But the reason we, we uh, accomplished so many things, and I don't have time to list all the things we accomplished, but we, we, we moved mountains. Our generation moved mountains. <clears throat> And that was because we were not afraid. But we also had, we also had elders who, monitored, who, uh, who mentored us, supported us, guided us, scolded us sometimes. And we fought with them. Because there was an ideological, philosophical difference between the older generation of our time and us. Pero, a lot a lot they were there supporting us and helping us. And that's what I hope my generation can do today for the young people who are fighting this fight. Because it's all our fight, it's all our fight. But I think that there comes a point in time when people like me and my generation need to pass a torch on, pass a baton on, and we become supporters. And we become people who can be guides maybe if you want, but the bad is gonna be yours but I think that we, just as our mentors helped us and guided us and scolded us sometimes and kicked us in the behind every so often and even fought with us sometimes, 
just like we do in any family. I hope we, uh, my generation, can do that for you. Porque, um, right across the street here, as a matter of fact, right across the street here was a place called Centro Atzlan. Remember the yeah. Centro Atzlan, right here, right across the street. Where we, um, several of us quit school to become full-time organizers for several years. And then we didn't get our degrees to way, way back, way later. Um, but that's, that's, that's the kind of commitment that you need. I feel sad. On the one hand, I'm very glad. Um, my heart soars like a hawk, as I said earlier, with pride, to see young people fighting the good fight. But on the other side of me, I feel very sad, infuriated, and sad, that we have to fight these fights all over again. We are in an era, and I've been around all these years. I've been involved in La Politica Chicana for over 45 years. And I have never, ever, in my entire life, seen or experienced such an anti-Mexican, Mexican-hating atmosphere as we are experiencing today. These people hate us. The people who are out there, who are out to harm us, hate us. It has nothing to do with us. I think it has to do with the fact that they they fear, they know, they read the census tracts as much as we do. They know who's the largest group, the fastest growing group. They know who's going to control. Mexicanos controlled Tucson politics many, many years ago. There was a time when Mexicanos ran the city. And that time's coming again. Yes, sir. And that's what they're scared of. Yes, sir. That's what they're scared of. I don't think it has to do with Chicano studies. I don't think it has to do with um, some of the other things that, that people are talking about. I think it has to do with fear. No tienen miedo. No tienen miedo. That's what it comes right down to. But from that fear, from the fear comes this racism that we're experiencing. But the only way to fight racism is to take, it on, take them on head on. Mm -hmm. Take them on head on. Wherever, every, every time one of those people, every time one of those pendejos raises their head, we have to be right in their faces. Because these people take, they have, they, have the mis, they have the misguided notion that the cultural characteristic of our people, of courtesy, they take it as weakness. And we've got to show them that, that, that that's not. But that's what we, uh, I could go on for many, 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 many hours, but uh, that's what I think this is about. That we're involved in a movement that's going to take on the Mexican haters. And one thing that I always tell everybody, when I speak, is that since 1848, since 1848, since the war ended, they've been trying, the Mexican haters have been trying to marginalize us. There was a time when they said we couldn't live in certain places in town, we couldn't vote, we couldn't go to school here, we couldn't go to school there, we couldn't eat in certain restaurants. But as you all know, we can live now wherever the hell we want to live, we can eat wherever we want, we can go to school wherever we want, because we win every time. We have won every single battle. And we're going to win this one. We're going to win this one.